Let's start this off a little differently. It's time for a pop quiz. I'm going to show you some old 16mm film clips, and your job is to figure out what they all have in common. Here we go. This first bit of footage is a close-up and personal view of a battle against a pretty intense grass fire. Second is a Titan missile on display. And third is, well, a bunch of people congregating to eat coconuts for some reason. Think you got it? No? Here, let me give you a hint. Here's that fire again. Recognize the hill in the background? Okay, okay, uh, uh, how about this library? Or this police department? This news footage was all shot in Jackson County. It's all part of a treasure trove of 16mm film spools from NBC affiliate KOBI5 and CBS affiliate KTVL10 that are in the process of being digitized at the Southern Oregon Historical Society. Gathered in the 60s up until about the late 70s, it offers a narrow window into Jackson County history. The sections that have been digitized so far include everything from meetings, to snow on the Siskiyou Pass, to FFA shows, or to the Rogue River Rooster Crow. There are also musical clips from earlier decades called Snaders. Think MTV before it killed the radio star. Except you and me. So set them up, Joe. I've got a little story you ought to know. We're drinking, my friend. To the end of a brief episode Make it one for my baby And one more for the road Well, 20 years ago or, or more, when I first started hanging around here, the, the then uh, librarian at the, at the time uh, Carol Harbison took me upstairs in, in the mezzanine and showed me thousands of cans of film and said there was no way to know what was on those cans, no way to show them. So I started agitating with, with the powers that be here at the time that you know, if they would give me just a very small amount of money I'd be able to start transferring them to, to, to video and there wasn't any interest. This is kind of typical of of historical society archives. You know, anything that isn't, isn't on paper is really mysterious and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to, how to archive it, they don't know how to transfer it, they don't know how to get it before the public. That changed when, when the historical society lost its funding. The volunteers got a grant for that $1,200 I needed to buy that little red box to attach to the, to the projector and so we could cable it into the, into the computer. And uh, then I started. I have a little bit of background. I am one of those kids who was never asked to be on the AV club when I was in junior high school and elementary school. So, th so this is my way of getting back. This is, this, is, this is my chance to shine. I did have some experience operating 16 millimeter projectors, so, so I wasn't frightened by film the way, the way a lot of people seem to be. So it was, it was pretty easy to, uh, to translate what little experience I had to do this project. A sizable portion of the film had come from a storage space used by NBC News affiliate KOBI5. The news station was in the midst of a move to its current building during the 1980s. And when it comes to stuff that's just sitting there, well, you know how moves go. And it was time to clean things out. We had at that time boxes and boxes and boxes of 16 millimeter film clips. There have been others who have stepped in to help with the project over the years. It's work that also involves the slow aggregation of a footage catalog. Having this amount of film is pretty unusual for a county historical society. Typically what, what happens is when I find someone who wants to help me, they will do this, the splicing, and then I'll do the, the, the cataloging, you know, typing into the, the computer as the film runs because all, every bit of film has to be cataloged. You know, we, we not only have to watch it, we have to record what's on the film so it can be found again. So what I do is prepare what's called a shot sheet for every bit of film, which describes visually what you see. 
All of those shot sheets are online. They're on the Historical Society website, SOHS.org, and you can search them, you can word search them, and, and you can come in here and view every bit of film that we have transferred about any particular topic, about the airport, about the police, about boring city council meetings. It just covers you know, the, the broad range of what was going on. The hundreds of clips digitized thus far show a broad sampling of coverage. A group of kids jumps into a just-dedicated Hawthorne pool. Pear Blossom Parade floats and acts make their way through Medford. Structures and brush are cleared at the site of a future Medford shopping center. There are fires, city council meetings, hospital construction projects in progress. In one sample, a figure of historic importance, no matter where you live, shows up. In another, a car crash into a pole is a subtle illustration of how policing has changed. The crash site is awash in passerby. There is no blocked off area webbed in yellow police tape, no community service officers telling reporters to wait for a public information officer. The community is just there, looking in the car, right next to uniformed cops. And you know the Applegate's iconic McKee Bridge? Here it is getting dedicated. And here are some crews performing maintenance on Dodge Bridge, while others still construct the Bailey Bridge in the Upper Rogue. There's just straight up weird stuff too. Here are a few clips of a small crowd playing with an armadillo, for some reason. And another small crowd deciding to build a snowman in their high heels. And how about this one? Here come the brides, right off a moving van, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in U-Hauls. Sometimes there's no context for what we're looking at. It's hard not to speculate, to conjure up parts of the story in your head. It just brings you back to the, the newspaper man's dictum, you know, who, what, when, where, and why. And the why can be the hardest part. Because on a piece of film, well, the, you may not have the who, but you have the what, when, and where. But figuring out the who and the why can be really difficult or next to impossible. But no matter the story, no matter the who, what, when, where, and why, the process for TV news gathering in the era of 16 millimeter demanded efficiency and dedication from reporters. You had typical stories running around town. Most people were involved in that kind of work, but we also had big stories that we did. I could do the turnaround from Salem shooting and finish shooting at one o'clock in the afternoon and we could have video with a 16 millimeter film and a recorded audio done with a tape recorder on the air for six o'clock news. That was body times three and a half hour driving the freeway faster than you ought to in order to get back to make the deadline. We could process that film ourselves and so you would go out and shoot it and then of course if it was something for news it had to be processed you know immediately for that night's newscast just as i got here that that was ending i will note that the 16 millimeter shoots though were so interesting because the film camera has a different feel than any video cameras it there's a there's a shutter noise that you had to be conscious of for sound and and of course the loading the film itself was dangerous because you couldn't let light into it so you had to have this bag that you did it without seeing what you were doing inside the bag so it was all very exciting and kind of you know Hollywood movie-esque I guess it was glamorous in that way however you could sure screw it up easily which I managed to do a couple times. 16 millimeters is a physical process after it gets developed you you splice you splice and cut um, then from that it would be put into film chain and made into video then uh, tape is all done it's all done electronically, um, even the earliest ones. I did some that was hand, hand done, was terrible at it. The first decks, you push buttons and hope they made edits. Um, now it's all, you, you can digitally capture it and edit it on a timeline. You never touch anything except buttons. Every time it was huge. Every change was huge. Uh, every change was exciting, so much more efficient, uh, ter tremendously successful, and um, and always a little bit of its own miracle, for sure. And now, you know, SD cards, which are the same size of the things you stick in a home camera, um, those are large enough to carry huge video files of high quality, 
and you know that is that's how we do it now. So it's quite a change from the huge amount of equipment you needed just to record on to a small camera with with an SD card that does frankly a much better job than those ever could. Um, the process though, the actual process is about the same from the 80s, the 70s till now. And though it's more efficient in some ways, the process takes about the same time. It's mostly about the decisions you make on how things go together and what they look like and how the information is presented. And those things, that's the brain that hasn't changed in all those years. Because local news is so important, you're not gonna get it any other way. Um, you know, CNN's not gonna spend a month in Medford, Oregon. Uh, so it's ex extremely important, and so that hasn't changed at all. It's no different than in the 50s. The COVID-19 pandemic pumped the brakes on the project, but it continues to roll on. So what happens when it's all finished? Well, that's anyone's guess. Well, I don't, I probably won't be around for the end game. This is a long-term project. There's an awful lot of film that, that needs to be transferred to video. And then there's the problem of what do you do with it? We've uh, put several dozen uh, clips on YouTube and they're not exactly burning up the internet. Largely because, again, because they're enigmatic like the ones I described and because they're silent and because they're black and white. You know, we, need, we would need creative people to actually make them not only accessible but entertaining. But even without a hard endgame in sight, the process continues. Slowly but surely, so many images imprinted on celluloid continue to make the shift into the digital sphere where anyone can view them. And even if some of those images lack the who and the why, there's one theme that makes the mysteries a little more bearable. All these puzzle pieces, they eventually add up to us, to where we call home. <laughs>